Welcome to the 2019 uh, Fantasy Football Draft for the Wyoming Valley Conference uh, here at the Citizens Voice. Uh, we got our sports staff here. Uh, it's uh, me, Eric Schultz, with Nat Bufano, Steve Bennett, Tony Meluso, sports editor. Um, after a few close years, I finally won last year's championship. I'm also the scorekeeper, but I promise everything was above board. Um, <laughs> beat Tony in his first year uh, after he had a big comeback uh, after a rough start to the first season. But, um, Some long-time waiver pickups. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of good free agents. So, you know, not all the best players were always drafted here because uh, you know, just things go wrong in the war room sometimes. But um, we're trying to pick the best teams that are uh, uh, available right now um, going into the first week of the football season. and. Uh, you know, starting things off, we have last year's uh, loser, Matt Bufano, making the yeah. first pick. Uh, last year, <laughs> Team Bufano came in fourth place among us four, but we gave it our all. We had some really good practices. You know, we put together a, a, a season we could be proud of, even though we didn't do much. But anyway, having the first pick, um, we've had a lot of good first picks uh, over the years. Steve, you know, before I was here, uh, guys like Gino Lewis from Valley West, Joe Marinacci from Wyoming area. More recently, Trey Potts last year was the first pick from Williamsport. Now he's at Minnesota, of course. Um, anyway, the guy who's going to be following in those footsteps is the number one draft pick this year, Lenny Kelly of Dallas. Um, running back, he was selected our player of the year last year, and uh, I believe he's primed for a good year this year. And just a note, we have a quarterback, two running backs, Two wide receivers, a flex that's either a running back to wide receiver, a kicker, and a team defense uh, to draft. So it's going to be eight rounds here, snake draft style. Uh, third place is Steve, so he's next. I'm going to go with the uh, first player from the WVC to make a Division One uh, verbal commitment over the summer, and that's uh, Berwick wide receiver, uh, free safety, kick returner, punt returner. Uh, probably going to get some carries out of the backfield this year. Uh, Berwick's Tegan Wilk. All right, well, that puts it up to me. And, you know, I was told by a wise man last night on Twitter when I was trying to uh, pander for draft tips to can't go wrong with drafting Wyoming area players. So I'll go with <laughs> Corey Murrock, Wyoming area running back. And now it's on the champ for two. Champ. All right, well. Um, and this was the belt. Yeah. yeah. Show your belt. Brand new belt right here. <laughs> Uh, I believe it was from uh, Walmart, right? I think so. <laughs> Walmart, my nephew's closet, yeah, one of the two. We go for the best stuff. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I always believe in starting off with a strong running game uh, in, in WVC. So looking at the returning running backs, it looks like uh, Zach Kojad, Kojad Dinovich from Lake Lehman is going to take over a lead role. And he was a bruising back when I covered some of those games last year. So I'm going to go with him for my first pick. Uh, second pick uh, is right back to me here. Um, Need a good quarterback, and uh, you know, returning talent always seems to win out when it comes to quarterback play. And we got a good quarterback in Wyoming area in Dominic DeLuca. Um, he can pass, he's able to run, he can score with his arm or with his feet, and uh, that's an exciting player to have uh, on your team. So he'll be my quarterback and uh, the first quarterback taken off the board here. All right, well, I'm thinking I like that strategy. I'm thinking about following the quarterback, and there's definitely a few good ones out there in the, in the uh, Wyoming Valley Conference, but. I think I'm going to go with somebody who, uh, coming off an injury last year, I think he's poised to have a really great senior season. That's Michael Starbuck from Dallas. I guess I'll uh, keep the quarterback uh, train rolling, and I will take uh, Ryan Loboff from Berwick. I figure Tiki Wilkes got to catch touchdown passes from somebody, and uh, I think uh, Loboff is going to have a very good year this year. He's really showed some promise last year, and uh, expecting big things out of him this year. Okay. Um, all right, now I got back-to-back -back picks here. Going to start off with Crestwood flex player because I, I believe he'll be a tight end. Brandon Nemensky, um, who holds a couple Division One offers. Um, and I kept that commit, I believe. Yeah, commit, yeah. UConn commit. UConn commit, there you have it. So um, probably one of the most talented players fits right into our team. And I'm going to follow that up with uh, wide receiver from Dallas, uh, Luke Delgadio. Um, another kid who I, I think has a couple offers. Um, if not, you know, he, he's definitely one of the more talented players. And a big target, and he'll be catching passes from uh, Tony's quarterback. Yeah, there. big piece of my championship team last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to go with a little speed on the outside uh, with this pick. I'm going to take uh, Raphael McCoy, wide receiver from uh, Wilkes-Barre area. The first ever on, uh, Wilkes-Barre area player to ever get drafted here. History. <laughs> All right. I think I need to get a wide receiver. You know, last year, I think he's going to hold up to the family name. His uh, older brother kind of set the world on fire there in uh, some games over in Nanticoke. So I think uh, – Following in line, I think Keanu Ammons could have a really great season uh, out there in Nanticoke. Uh, coming off a just a, a, was a six and five last year, I think uh, they really build on some things, and I think he could be a, a big piece of that. All right, well, I got the running back, quarterback taken care of, and uh, you know, still looking for those experienced veterans. Uh, looking at wide receiver, I'm going to go with Andrew Krawchick from. Pitt scenario. Um, he's back for uh, set to 30, I believe, starting and you know making an impact on the team. And he has Mike Nacido still back at quarterback too. And that's a that's a connection that probably is going to pay off in, in uh, a few games for me here. So looking forward to Andrew being able to get out and uh, you know lead the team in receiving. And that Four brings more. me up again. Yeah. So I'll fill up the running back spots. Uh, take my second one off the board here. It's mechanics Gavin Damato. Um, he's, a, he's a tough kid. Uh, made it to states uh, in, in wrestling this past year, and uh, you know that toughness is only going to pay off when you're on the gridiron too, trying to trying to you know get, get to the second level of defense. So I believe in him there. Wrestling guys always got to stick together. Yep. <laughs> All right, I think I got the field to show my uh, my running back group. I remember last year, kind of going with the same little theme here. Last year, I know Burke had a very strong running game. Owen Shoemaker graduated. But it uh, looks like Aiden Mason could be the heir apparent out there this year. So I'm going to put pencil him in as my second running back and uh, see what he can do down there at the, with the starting job. Well, I figure it might be time that I'm going to take a running back as well. So I'm going to uh, select uh, Valley West running back uh, Brendan Woods. Uh, Spartans always seem to have a pretty good running game, and I kind of think he's going to take it over this year. Okay, and while Steve takes his first running back, I'll take my second. I'm going to go with Ryan Eden from Lake Lehman. Uh, that's two Lake Lehman running backs off the board between him and Kojad. Um, so his name's a lot more easier to spell. That's Yeah, <laughs> and, and say and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, Ryan Eden, and I'm going to finish that up with another Ryan, uh, Ryan Fisher, the kicker from Dallas, who, geez, he, he was... One of the leaders last year in extra points, and he also uh, made one of the biggest kicks of the season um, to win in districts. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Well, I figure I'll wrap up the running back spot, uh, and I'm going to go with uh, Hazelton Arias Lance Johnson. You know, obviously, uh, you know. It was tough for him to get his carries last year, but in the limited time that he did see, he did put up some solid numbers for the Cougars. So now that he gets the chance to take over as the featured back, um, I think Lance Johnson is going to be a solid pick for me. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to break a trend here. I think I'm going to take the first defense off the board. Uh, definitely some strong, hard-nosed units out there. The one that really kind of stands out to me that I think really have the best year is Dallas. So I'm going to go... Dallas Mountaineer defense, kind of anchor my group. All right, well, we saw uh, Raphael McCoy getting taken off uh, as the first Wilkes-Barre area uh, member, and he has a speed to stretch a defense, that wide receiver. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how all those pieces come together, but Malachi Williams had a great year at receiver for GAR last year, so um, I'm kind of hoping that he can find a good role with the Wolfpack, too, and I'll take him as my second receiver as uh, the first of my two picks here. Uh, the second one, you're still talking about speed at receiver. Uh, I'm going to go with Sean Sheptock with Berwick. Um, Tegan Wilkes going to be uh, somebody that defenses are going to have to key on, but Sean Sheptock was fast enough to make the state track and field in the 100 meters last year just on his time alone. So that's speed that uh, defenses are going to have struggle to, uh, struggle to uh, keep it, keep up with, too. So I'm hoping he can maybe uh, take the top off the defense and get a couple of deep balls. Yeah, I like where your head's at. For my second wide receiver, I'm going with that whole speed thing. One of the top returners from last year, uh, Valley West is Nasir Garner. Very explosive player. Can really put up some numbers uh, quick. And I think he can do some good things in my offense here. 
Well, since we're getting uh, deep into the draft, um, I'm going to go defense with this pick. Um, strength of schedule uh, is certainly uh, weighing as far as defense goes in Wyoming area's favor, so uh, I'm going to take Wyoming area's defense. All right, last year I had a lot of Wyoming area players. They're almost all off the board, um, but one of the guys that's still out there and I need a second wide receiver, Brian Williams, got seven touchdowns. I think that Wyoming area is primed for another uh, pretty solid season, so Brian hopefully catches me some more touchdowns. And I'm the only team without a quarterback, so might as well finish that up. Ethan Adams from Lake Lehman. I think he has the potential to be the, the top one. Um, so we'll hope for the best there. And uh, yeah, one more pick for me, two for everybody else. All right. Well, I'm taking care of my kicker here. I'm going to take Jackson Montross, uh, the kicker from Pancanic. Uh, I believe last year he had uh, four field goals. His longest was around 40 yards or so. And uh, Coach Maribel, when I was out there, kind of uh, assured me that uh, He's not afraid to use them, so hopefully Jackson will get me some points kicking. You know, Matt kind of sold me on uh, when he was talking about so, some of his good things about Ethan Adams. I was just considering on taking him earlier when I went with Starbucks instead, but I'll go the other route, and I'll get the guy who could be catching the touchdowns from Ethan Adams. Uh, for my flex position, I'll fill it in with Lake Lehman wide receiver Casey Kaminsky. And I think that's four Lehman players. Quarterback Adams, the two running backs, and now wide receiver. One of the more prominent teams so far in the draft. Yeah, it looks like we got four Berwicks right now, too. Um, I'm going to make it a five if you count defenses. Uh, Berwick's defense, it seems like whatever year, uh, whoever's you know in that unit, um, it, you know, it's a tough team to face, especially when they're on the road at Crispin Field. So um, I'm expecting you know another Great year from them, and uh, you know, shutting down offenses, forcing turnovers, maybe getting me a few defensive touchdowns off. I'll stick with the Bulldogs there. And to finish off my team, I need a kicker. Uh, Jack Wessler from Northwest, uh, he had a solid year last year kicking, and uh, with him back in the fold with the Rangers, uh, that, that's a reliable piece to have. Uh, when you're looking for field goals or extra points, so I'll, I'll stick with him. You know, and I gotta close out with the kicker as well. One of the most high powered teams, even though they got some. Holes to fix on offense is uh, Hazleton area, but they like to move it around. They like to put up some points. So go uh, with their kicker, uh, go Luke Russo. And for my last pick, I have to fill the flex spot. So I'm going to go with Dallas tight end Jack Farrell. I know Coach Manello is not afraid to use the tight end, get him open down the field. Doesn't just keep him in there to block. So hopefully... Uh, Michael Starbuck won't be throwing too many passes to uh, Luke Delgadio. He'll be looking for Jack Farrell down, especially in the red zone. So we'll see how that works out. All right. And the last pick uh, is not an individual, but rather my defense. And last year, across the board, it seemed like Wyoming area had the best defense. They're off the board. Berwick, Dallas, some of the top units. I'm picking Pittston area, thinking that Pittston area could have a breakout year. Uh, they won four games last year. I think that they're on the up and up, um, and that'll complete uh, the draft here. There's our draft board. It's just about time because my marker is about ready to die, so it's a perfect time, I think, to uh, to wrap it up. But there's they take a look at the board. That's this year's uh, starting rosters, at least for our fantasy football league. Over the course of the year, we'll be doing add and drops. Uh, maybe a trade. Maybe, yeah, there might be, there might, is big. There might be a trade. Free, yep. So you never know what's going to happen. Uh, so if you're a player out there in the WBC, you go, oh, my God, these, these these four idiots didn't pick me. Well, go out and rush for 500 yards in the first three weeks, and you'll be on a roster sooner or later. You bet, and uh, you never know. You might be helping someone else, someone else here take uh, that prestigious uh, championship belt. Yeah, last year, uh, one of the best players in the conference, statistically, Carson Canavan, was undrafted. Uh a lot of talent out there. Um, and before we wrap up, too, wanted to say thanks to Stephen Connors, our copy editor behind the camera here, um, and also uh, one of the copy editors of Game Face, which Steve, uh, you know, spent a lot of time reporting on around the camps. And the kickoff edition is going to be Tuesday. Wednesday. 
Wednesday. Wednesday, the 20th, Wednesday, August 21st, so make sure you get that. Uh, make sure you pick it up on newsstands, gas stations, whatever you got to go to. You're not going to want to miss it. Jim Pax, Steve did a great job. Uh, we got some great features, some great stories on some of the top uh, players and look at each team, some in-depth scouting reports, and uh, make sure you check that out on Wednesday, the 21st. Also, it'll be online, citizenvoice.com sports. We'll have the stuff on there as well. And we're looking forward to a great year.